Hey, this is Dave Liu with guns.com and today I'm going to give you a few of my personal tips and tricks on gun cleaning. There's tons of videos out there about how to clean, why to clean, when to clean. I'm not going to go over that today. Today I'm actually just going to give you some of my personal tips that will hopefully make the experience a little bit more pleasant for you. So the first thing is your area, your space, where are you going to do the cleaning? Now I like to have a dedicated place. This is my cleaning, gun cleaning and gunsmithing kind of area. I keep all the stuff that I need right at you know, fingertips reach. Now I know sometimes you don't always have a space in your house. And before I had this house, I had to kind of keep it mobile, right? So what I had was this toolbox out here and I fit all my cleaning stuff in here. I still keep a couple things in there so that if I go to the range, I, can have, I have a portable cleaning kit that I can take with me. But in general, most things I have all set up here for my uh, gun cleaning and gunsmithing needs. Next is light. Light's super important when you're doing detailed, fine gunsmithing, gun cleaning work. So I got a dedicated light right here. In addition, I keep a headlamp right at on my little bench here so that I can put it on. And this kind of directs the light right where you need it. So especially for us older guys who are, their eyes are failing a little bit, a little extra light is, is, is really nice. Next is glasses. One for safety. These are actually reading glasses, so they give a little bit of magnification. This is a 1x magnification. But I find it's perfect for when you're doing gunsmithing because of all the small parts, small screws, small pins. When you're messing around with uh, scopes and turrets and stuff like that, that 1x really does help. Now, your cleaning surface. Uh, as, pro as a lot of you probably already know, a, a hard surface, spring screws will hit it and roll off the edge. So that's why it's, it's nice to have a, a cleaning surface. This is a tech mat. I find it's a little spongy surface and it's really good at not allowing things to roll like scr screws and springs and stuff like that. Uh, the only thing I don't like about it is it's black. You can lose black screws on a black you know, uh, mat. So that's why I actually, most of the time, I'll throw down a towel or a rag, something light colored, white, so that you can see, see anything that falls uh, on the ground. Another thing I like to use is a baking sheet. Now this is for workshop only. I took it from my wife, but it stays in here. So don't cook on it afterwards. But baking sheet's nice because it has a lip. So if you do have screws and, and springs loose, they don't roll off, they stay in the contained area. Also, when you're blowing, blowing out some of your guns with some of their uh, aerosols, everything, and, and you use your solvents, everything stays on the baking sheet and it's nice, easy to clean. Also, I always have around a whole bunch of different bowls. I like these uh, ceramic bowls because they're easy to clean out and uh, the solvents don't get stuck in them and they don't stain them at all. So I use these for spraying stuff out and when I'm pouring solvents in them. These little Tupperwares, they're great for parts. So, you know, when you're taking a gun apart, throw everything in here and you make sure you won't lose all those little springs, screws and everything else that kind of falls apart. Next, I always keep a pillowcase around. Now you can use a pillowcase, you can use sheet, um, anything you want, but Sometimes when you're taking apart guns, you have springs under tension. And how many times have you, and I have, lost a spring because you didn't really expect it and you, you let your hand slip and it goes flying across the room somewhere and you gotta go on your hands and knees to try to find it. So what I use is a pillowcase. So I'll, sometimes I'll take apart a gun that I know is especially finicky with lots of little springs that pop out. I'll do it inside the pillowcase. Last nice thing to have is some kind of action block. Um, basically an action block is something sturdy that you can set the gun on with little holes in it so that you can push out pins and the pins will go through the holes onto the ground, but it'll still support whatever firearm you have. This one is specifically an AR-15 uh, um, action block, but I do kind of everything on there. You can have different action blocks for every single type of gun, but just one in general is fine. And really you don't even need to buy one. Uh, a, a block of wood is perfectly fine. Uh, I usually have one that I drill through, a couple holes in it so I can knock out pins on that block of wood. So next, having good tools I think is really important. Yes, pretty much any screwdrivers, they'll work, but with all the precision parts in guns, it's very easy to like, strip screws or if you don't have the exact right screw or Phillips screw size, if it's the wrong, it doesn't fit perfectly, it'll help sometimes mar some of the screw heads. And those are the show pieces on your gun. So you'll have chips and dings on your screws and nobody really wants that. Really good tools last longer. This is my Brownells uh, tool screwdriver kit. I've had it for 20 years and it's starting to show a little bit of wear on some of the really small hex heads. So 
it's been pretty durable and it's I've taken about a lot of guns with it. So I highly recommend really good screw sets, really good tools so that you can really enjoy taking your part, guns apart and not cause any kind of damage when you are taking them apart. Hex keys, they're really important. We use them all the time. Um, uh, Bondus makes a really great set. They're high quality. And I specifically, specifically like these ends. They're a bit of a ball end on, the, on these hex keys. They allow you to attack these, some of these screws at different angles. Sometimes you don't have a perfect perpendicular angle to the screw. Sometimes you have to come to, at it from the side. These ball heads allow you to do that so that you can get a little bit of an angle so that you can take the screws apart. In addition, punches. Punches are super important too. You're gonna to need them a lot. I have sets of both brass and steel punches. And the most people will say you gotta use brass punches so you don't mar your gun, and that's correct. But as you can see, brass is soft, and that's why you use it, because it's soft and it won't mar your gun. But on this particular punch, uh, it's starting to drift a little bit. It's gonna start to warp a little bit, because pounding on the brass, it starts to, to push it over. So that's why it's nice to have steel punches as well. I have a set of real avid uh, AR-15 punches and a set of uh, Starrett punches. Those are nice, hard steel ones. So I'll usually get either a, a, a pin started or kind of finish a pin with the steel ones so they start moving and I can transfer all the energy through the, uh, the steel punch. Then I'll, when I'm getting close to the, the, the finish, I'll switch over to a brass punch so that if I do slip a little bit, it'll, it won't uh, mar the, uh, the finish of the gun. Now brushes. Brushes are important. That you kind of use it for everything when you're cleaning. You don't need to go crazy on brushes. Uh, most of the time, old toothbrushes work. So I, I, I have an electric toothbrush, so I have a whole bunch of these old electric toothbrush heads. I use them all the time. There are the gun-specific uh, brushes, and they're actually really nice too, especially because they have the, the sm slimmer profile, so you can really get into rails and stuff like that. So I really like these, uh, these slim profile brushes. Um, Real Avid makes a whole bunch of gun-specific um, brushes and um, they're really nice too they have different shaped heads so that you can reach different crevices with depending on the the head they also make them in uh nylon and brass heads uh bristles so uh depending on what you what you need to clean you have the exact brush um from them uh one thing to uh, i to save the life on your brushes um if you just use your brush alone and you spray it with solvent and you scrub it down eventually they'll get really black and you'll kind of ruin them to make them last longer, what I use is I put a, take a patch and I'll actually wrap it around the brush. So most of the gunk gets on the patch and not the brush. Also, a buddy of mine really likes these uh, pipe cleaners. They have uh, embedded brass in them, so they're a little bit more aggressive than standard pipe cleaners. He loves using them. So sometimes you need something a little bit more aggressive uh, than a uh, brush. You need something actually solid. Uh, that's when I go to picks. I got a number of different picks. Um, steel picks, brass picks, and nylon picks. Uh, basically they're dental picks, but uh, now they kind of made them all these different uh, materials so that you can use them where you see fit. Uh, brass picks, of course, they're gonna be kind of, kind of in the middle where they're not gonna be too aggressive, but they're hard enough that you can get into those little corners and really scrape out any of the dirt and debris. Uh, nylon's gonna be the softest, so you won't need to worry about anything barring your finish or, or gouging anything out with that. And then there's uh, stainless steel picks, which, um, you know, they're going to be the most dangerous. Be careful with them. Go gently with them. Uh, the stainless steel picks are, are sometimes what I use to um, get into really nooks, nooks and crannies, but I'll wrap a, uh, a patch around the stainless steel pick so that it won't scratch the surface. So another thing I like to use when I want to get deep into something but I uh, don't want to hurt the surface is I like wood. Uh, I used to use uh, toothpicks a lot, and a lot of guys swear by toothpicks, but I found toothpicks a little bit uh, too weak. They weren't sturdy enough. So I went to uh, golf tees. Golf tees are a little bit stronger, a little bit more sturdy. They'll hold up to pressure. And then you can also wrap them with uh, patches or paper towels and do your scrubbing and they definitely won't hurt uh, any metal surface. Now for cleaning, I kind of use two different kind of paper products. One is uh, paper towels, just regular paper towels. The other one is our patches. Uh, I like to buy um, shotgun patches. I actually, I'll buy them in bulk. Uh, a ton, of, a whole bunch at a time. And this has actually lasted me over 10 years. The reason why I like shotgun patches is because these are the biggest patches you can get and they work great for shotguns. But you can just use some scissors, cut them down to any size you want. So I don't need to buy nine millimeter, 22, 223 patches. I'll just buy shotgun patches and cut them to size. 
and shotgun patches, buying them in bulk, that's the cheapest way to go. Next are the actual chemicals I use. Uh, before actually getting to the chemicals, I like to use some, the applicators. Now, a lot of times, some of these chemicals will come in these aerosol cans. And uh, while they're nice to really blow stuff out, the aerosol cans can kind of blow things all over the base, especially if you have a small space or you're in a kitchen and you really don't want to get all your solvents everywhere. It's not nice to have something kind of blow and kind of aerosolize all over the place. So what I'll do is um, I'll, I'll fill up little bottles instead. Uh, this is a little spray bottle. And then this one is a little, a little uh, needle oiler. And these are great for precision, putting your solvent or your oil exactly where you want it and not have it spray all over the place. So one of my favorite products is the uh, Slip 2000 brand of cleaning products. Uh, it was recommended to me by the late and great Pat Rogers. And if it was good enough for Pat, it's good enough for me. Uh, their kind of flagship uh, product is their uh, CLP, which is a cleaner, lubricator, and protectant. So basically this does it all. This will clean, you'll spray it on your gun, You'll, it'll clean it, you can scrub with it, it'll lubricate it, so once you're done scrubbing it, you can leave it on and it'll lubricate the gun and it'll protect it from rust and everything else. There's lots of different uh, CLPs out there. I personally like the Slip 2000 one. Uh, another good one is the uh, Break Free one. It's also a very good and well-trusted uh, CLP. In addition to the CLPs, I also like um, Slip 2000's uh, gun degreaser. And it also, it comes in a spray bottle. So it's really good to kind of get into those little nooks and crannies. You'll spray your degreaser if something's really dirty and you really need to like get the, clean it out. This degreaser works really well. Uh, Slip 2000 also makes a uh, EL, EWL uh, oil. It's a bit of a thicker oil. It's called their Extreme Weapon Lubricant. So it's a little bit more for extreme conditions. And finally, I use their EWG Extreme Weapon Grease. So typically oil is kind of used on most firearms, but sometimes you, you want to use grease. Typically grease is used on areas where you want the lubrication to stay permanently and you need it thick. Uh, trigger parts, usually uh, the surf sear surfaces, that's where you would use grease. Other times in certain weather conditions when it's either hot or cold, where a, a oil won't work, uh, a grease might be a good substitute. So I love CLPs, but because they do three things pretty well, they don't do any one thing perfectly. And sometimes when you're cleaning, you need a little bit more oomph in your chemicals. So when the CLPs won't get the job done, I'll go to some different stuff. I find the, the, the tried and true Hoppies number no. nine, a really great gun cleaner. Uh, it, it works great whenever you know, the CLP doesn't do the job. Uh, the only bad part about it is it, it does have a smell. Some people like it, some people don't. Uh, so. That is one consideration when you're getting to more stronger chemicals, they might have a smell. Luckily, the Slip 2000 and especially the Break Free CLP, they really don't have much of a smell, so it's a little bit nicer if you have uh, other people in the house with you. A couple of other things to usually have on hand is uh, one Loctite. Uh, I have a, I'm actually trying out Vibratite, which is kind of very similar to Loctite, but it's always good to have some kind of, uh, this is basically an adhesive for screws. So when you screw something in, it'll lock the screw in place and it won't back out under recoil um, and you know have your gun you know plates come off your gun or optics come off your gun so always having a little bit of loctite it's a good idea another thing that's useful is having some anti-seize this is actually a loctite brand of anti-seize and basically what anti-seize is is when you're mating two mater different materials together like if you're screwing in something aluminum into something steel it's always good to have some anti-seize otherwise you might have some galling in between the two surfaces so anti-seize is really nice. Grease also works in those cases. Uh, one thing to note, when you're torquing things down, they should not be dry. A little bit of oil, a little bit of grease on this, the, the surfaces or a little bit of Loctite is actually what's recommended and what's put into the calculation when they're recommending torque specs. So when you're torquing something down, make, make sure it's not completely dry. Another thing I always have on hand is uh, alcohol. Uh, I find alcohol really, really useful for all kinds of things, for definitely for cleaning, stickers off adhesive, anything else. A lot of times you have to use alcohol to clean things down. And the last thing I'm gonna recommend is a one of these uh, aerosol, aerosol dusters. Um, I don't have a compressed air uh, machine in my office here. So this is the next best thing. If you have an air, an air compressor, that's great. I, I, I use them all the time in my other shop. But for, for down here, I don't have one. So uh, this, uh, this is a substitute. Well, I hope this helped. Um, stay tuned. I'm going to do another cleaning tips video specifically for rifles. So uh, be on the lookout for that. 
Other than that, please like and subscribe. Uh, remember to go to guns.com for all your firearms needs. And also, they also have, and I just kind of found this out, they have merchandise too. Shirts like this, guns.com. And they also have uh, coffee, which is surprisingly good. So guns.com coffee.